learning objectives uh, uh, are structure and function of cell wall. This is the cell wall here. This is a bacterium in general, where you could see the, there are fimbriae, there's a flagellum, there's a capsule, and then there is a cell wall, right? This structure outside this blue line. Here, this is a, a much exploded version of the, the membranes that cover the bacterium. This is the cell membrane, this is the cell wall, and this is a capsule. So this is the structure that we are gonna study uh, in this part. Cell wall is a rigid layer. It is present just outside the plasma membrane, and it is the most important structure of the bacterium, of the prokaryotes, because it provides the, the shape to the bacterium. It also gives protection against osmotic lysis, and it is also pathogenic. It provides pathogenicity. Pathogenicity is the ability of an organism to cause disease. So a disease-causing organism is called pathogenic. There are non-pathogenic, where we see that the cell, they do have cell wall, but the cell wall has, is missing those structures that are involved in pathogenicity. We would see that in a minute. Because cell wall is the most important structure in prokaryotes, it is also a target for many antibiotics that are used to kill or to stop a bacteria from growing inside the body during infections. Grams staining, everybody knows about gram staining that we can classify or group bacteria, prokaryotes into two families or two big classes on the basis of Grams staining behavior. Grams was a Danish microbiologist. He, in 1988, he experimented with different stains and found that all bacteria could be divided into Gram negative and Gram positive bacteria based on behavior of the stains that they retain, those bacteria retain. Those that are gram negative, they appear red or pink, and those that are gram positive, they retain crystal violet dye, which basically imparts them a blue color. Although at the time when Graham did this experiment and found that Graham's staining is useful for classifying bacteria, bacteria, prokaryotes. He did not know what was going on, what was the differences, uh, what makes, what made those differences in the, in, in the bacteria. But later on, transmission electron microscopy revealed that the differences basic, basically were lying with the cell wall. Now we know that in gram-positive bacteria, the cell wall is very, very thick significantly thicker if you compare with that of a gram-negative bacterium. Here you see a gram-negative cell wall compared with a gram-positive cell wall. So this, is, was, this was basically the difference that created this uh, unique behavior of grams staining. If you look at the peptidoglycan structure, it is made up of two sugar molecules that we call an acetyl glucosamine here and an acetyl uh, glucosamine muramic acid. These two sugar molecules, they form the backbone of the cell wall, and these molecules can range from somewhere 10 to 65 molecules, all held together. And then we see two more components, basically proteins, that there is a side chain, what we call a tetrapeptide, there are like four different amino acids linked together. Uh, these are called side chains. And then there, are another, there is another chain of uh, pentapeptides where we have five or six or sometimes seven different amino acids. These are the same amino acid glycine, and these are called cross uh, interbridges. These are interbridges, and these are side chains. So these glucose molecules coupled with the peptide molecules, tetrapeptides and pentapeptides, they form a kind of meshwork that forms or combine to form the cell wall. Please note that our body, it can 
not degrade d amino acids it can only our enzymes i mean human enzymes and animal enzymes are evolved to use amino acids with l configuration or l isomers of amino acids many bacteria as as you can see here this glutamate it is d glutamate and this is alanine it is d alanine so such amino acids they are not degraded by the body by the animal body or human body so the bacteria basically has an advantage here because if the the protein molecule is not being able to be degraded then bacteria would proliferate there happily so this could be a problem as well this is the backbone of those uh, the peptidoglycan glucose molecules they form somewhere from 10 to 65 uh, molecules held together and then there are interbridges or cross bridges and then side chains they all are held together in a meshwork sometimes between the side chains the side chains are linked together through what we call cross links so they they are directly covalently bonded to the amino acid of one side chain can bond to the side chain of another amino acid of another side chain or nearby side chain however sometimes we also see what we call interbridges or cross bridges where this is a side chain this is a side chain and these two side chains are held together through a peptide interbridge which consists of here in this case five glycine uh, amino acids held together this is where the penicillin interferes and causes the bacteria to be killed so here when we apply penicillin the penicillin breaks or does not allow these cross bridges to occur there so the cell wall becomes weak and the bacteria can die or cannot proliferate or replicate inside the body this is how penicillin acts on the bacterium there is another structure i was talking about the the pathogenicity in the cell wall this is a tachyic acid here tachyic acid has two different kinds of molecules as you can see this is called a wall tachyic acid it remains within the wall it does not touch the the inner cell plasma membrane or cell membrane but then on the other side you could see there is another tachyic acid molecule which we call a lipo tachyic acid because it it forms or it is inserted into the inner cell membrane here so this part must be lipophilic as you could see that a plasma membrane has lipid bilayer so anything that gets inserted into the plasma membrane has to have uh, a lipophilic property so there are two kinds of tachyic acids the wall tachyic acid remains within the cell wall and then there are uh, other kinds of tachyic acid what we call lipo uh, tachyic because it has lipid in it and that is inserted into the cell membrane and then we also see some other integral pr- proteins in the cell wall similarly this is another uh, another version of the uh, gram positive bacteria a uh, cell wall where you could see that this thick layer is basically peptidoglycan and then this is a lipo tachyic acid that is inserted into the plasma membrane and then a wall tachyic acid that remains within the wall and tachyic acid basically is composed of uh, glycerol or ribitol which is a sugar and phosphates as you can see there are three phosphates attached to this glycerol or ribitol 